I'm okay. I'm that opinion of myself. We're rolling. Black lives do matter. Police violence against black communities must end now. The murder of black youth, of black people, by the white police must end now. You don't know what you're talking about. If the police cannot be reformed, then they must be abolished. I still don't know what I'm talking about, do I? Okay. <laughs> Friend, brother, join us. Speak out against what we all see happening. Leave him alone. He doesn't want any part of your posing and nonsense. No, 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 my friend. I feel what you're saying. No, wait, listen. These stupid protesters have no idea what's going on. All they see is black men being killed by police. There's a high incidence of you say, sure there is. But do you ask yourself why? Can you give me that line again? There's a high incidence of incidences. That you All they say. see is black men being killed by police. There is a high incidence of you say, of sure there is. Do I have the inflection right? No, you, you, you're, dropping, you're dropping the words, he says. There's a high incidence of incidents, you say. Or incidences, you say. Yeah, I was going to kind of... Okay. There's a high... In Let me do it. No, wait, listen. These stupid protesters have no idea what's going on. All they see is black men being killed by police. There's a high incidence of high incidences, you say. Sure there is. But do you ask yourself why? What is it like to police and patrol in dangerous neighborhoods or deal with violent, erratic individuals acting out? God, I wish I knew it was on the next page. Uh, that's always the excuse. Well, how do we stop these incidents from happening? Oh, you're going to say we, we need to understand the conditions that cause them and, and change those conditions. What conditions? There are many questions to consider. Like what? Why? Well, why is it that if a black person is dealing with what is called, or so-called serious mental illness, they are so much more likely to be living or wandering around the streets? where they'll be most likely get into conflict or trouble with police? I don't know. Uh, uh, poverty, lack of community services, <laughs> lack of community resources where black people live. Yes, but why is that? The economic inequality. What does that mean? How did this condition of things come to be? You think all these guys who get shot by cops are crazy? No, I think mostly they are pretty sane. But angry individuals acting out. Perhaps so. Sometimes, perhaps so. Are you siding with the cops, making excuses for the police? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying perhaps sometimes these individuals are acting and behaving as any otherwise normal, reasonable person would living in a condition of profound, constant frustration, deprivation, injustice, and despair, behaving as you or I, or any of us would behave. Officer, if they are perhaps behaving as angry, belligerent individuals, acting out as you say, it is only as if you yourself will behave. It is only live. as you, you yourself will behave. Officer, if they are perhaps behaving as angry and belligerent individuals, acting out as you say, it is only as you yourself would behave if you lived as they do, if you had to walk in their shoes. This is distracting from the immediate issue. Well, if you don't have the patience to listen and then think, then how will you understand what must be done to change our situation? Slavery ended more than 150 years ago. And perhaps we all understand that historical context and the context of lynching and of grow Jim Crow laws and of the sharecropper system of northern style Jim Crow and of every kind of legal and de facto discrimination. Okay, so tell us about it. Okay. To understand why things happen the way they do in this city and this country, we have to look back at our history. Let's go all the way back to the days after the end of World War II. Da, 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 da. 
Here he goes, snapping into action. <laughs> Let's see, we got the stopwatch going here. <laughs> That's right, turn the sign around. <laughs> hey, what are you doing, Mr. Harris? <laughs> I look like I just came back from the war. Woohoo! Uh, you you got some stuff over here too. Yeah. <laughs> he gave you a head start, David. I need it. <laughs> oh damn! Here. Should be another tie. Uh, it's okay. It'll come. Around on the rocks. This isn't really good. Another tie. This isn't really good. Hell! Hell! Oh, did he get the big shirt? Hey, we could do the kiss. We're buzzing when we come back. Come on, in Times Square. This isn't really good. Is it too small? Yeah. Hey, Dave. Dave, can you switch shirts with Mr. Harris? Huh? You're just loving this, huh? Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's great. It makes for great no, cinema. I them jumping. <laughs> yeah, try try that. <laughs> so you'll have to practice this a few times, but uh, yeah, this ain't gonna fit me, but. Yeah, uh, you doing any better with that one? It's so uh, yeah, we'll have to like. Okay, you guys get it. You're not worth. Big shoulders okay? here just don't quite uh, fit in there. But we're back home, so we're wearing like dress uniforms and stuff. Well, that's that's the biggest one they had, I guess. You know, people yeah, were. The American public to see what we wore in wartime. Guys were smaller back then. In the snow, Anzio. Oh, last minute back on. Yeah. Here, David, you got a tie coming. Hey. We need to research how's a quick change. Quick change. Yeah. <laughs> a study in do it. Wardro. All they do is. I don't really think they would have been wearing once the war was over. I don't think they would have been wearing ties. Because they would have said F that. I don't think they kept those guys in ties. That was only when they are on leave. Well, the 1940s. Everybody would have look good. That isn't looking good. It makes you look like a... a <laughs> oh, that's what you, like, hippies say now. Why would now? you wear something around your neck the boss can pull on? <laughs> well, that was, that was good the way it was. No, I fucked it Jack Durak start Yeah, that was good the way it was. All you had to do was just pull it down. Yeah, I fucked it up. I made a double... Jack Kerouac started what? Looks like you work for McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I let my M1 do my talking. I don't wear no garrison clothes like them sissy soldiers uh, hanging around yeah, in the mall. We got to get you a bigger shirt. I can bring something on my own. Oh, okay. When the time comes. Not bad, not bad. Okay. This will work. This will work for now. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's very theatrical. Let's do it. All right. Okay, you guys are all theatrical. No, 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 keep the hat on. Keep no. it. Come on, come on, come on. This hat doesn't go with this uniform. This oh, way. don't start Let's that. Let's do it. <laughs> the guy at the shop said that was the hat. The creative impulse of that guy in the shop is, is, is a nut. That's why I like him. <laughs> Your friend in the shop said that's a hat. The only Jewish guy I ever knew has sold Zyklon B canisters. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Remember falling down with Michael Douglas Jr.? <laughs> I think we're going to have to leave that out. This is, okay. This is feeling a little rough. Let's do it. Okay, right. 
Uh, so they put on military clothes. Did it. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, okay. Autumn, 1945. Imagine two <laughs> veterans returning from the war overseas, like many millions did. Say two men. One black, one white. Okay, good. One's named Joe, one's named Bill. So, we're back from overseas, the war's over. We've come back to the United States. Fascism is defeated. Now begins a new post-war era in the world and in America. Hey, but don't be surprised if there are any more wars, Bill. But this is a new start for the people in this country, Joe. This country has a lot of cruelty and injustice in its history. But we're going to change all that now. The Jim Crow laws and lynching and discrimination must end. We will be one nation and one people. But millions of men coming home and leaving military service all at once. Now everyone needs a job. Everyone needs to make a living and everyone needs a place to live. There's an act in Congress that was passed into law last year called the Servicemen's Readjustment Act. And people call it the GI Bill. Like you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Under Title III, returning veterans like us are now offered access to new low-cost homes and low-interest home loans to buy them with. This is like what the Federal Housing Administration and Home Loan Owners, Home Owners Loan Corporation have been doing for some years now. But this is much bigger, much better. Okay. Welcome to the Veterans Administration. What can I do for you? Hi, sir. I've served my country in the war, and now I'd like to apply for Title III housing. Of course. Fill out these forms. Ah. You're eligible for a low-interest VA home loan. Ah, two of you working in the office. Ah, times are good. <laughs> <laughs> the government has contractors putting a new housing development here to the east of the, mid of the Midtown. How about something around here? Sure, I have some money saved from when I beat that dumb shit Joe over there at poker, but, but I still need to find a job, of course. Naturally, the Veterans Administration can provide you with job training and placement. The local construction industry needs workers for all this new housing we are putting up. How would that be? That would be just fine. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Bill, you see on this map, they're putting in new houses here just a little ways on the east side of Midtown. That's where I'm going with my wife. We'll get a house, I'll get a job. We'll start a family. They're putting in houses there for returned ex-servicemen. They're building them now as we speak. The VA will train you for a job too. You should go over there and do the same, Joe. Okay, I guess I will. Sir, I served my country in the war, and they tell me I'm eligible to apply for Title III housing. Fill up these forms. We'll see what we can find for you. I hear they're putting up new houses just a little ways on the east side of Midtown. I'd like to get a home here for my wife and for myself. We don't have anything available there anymore. We'd have to see if we could find you something in the old housing stock over here. Oh, wait. In the West End? Oh, that's right, in the West End. I should be eligible for a loan, low interest VA home loan, though. I'm afraid such loans are not available for homes in the West End. We can put you in touch with the realtor lenders who offer the kinds of contract agreements they do for buyers in the West End. But those, of course, are very different. But I don't even want to live in the West End. I'm sorry. <sighs> Veterans Administration can provide me with job training and placement then? I'm sorry, we can't help you. The Veterans Administration has limited resources. The war is over and everyone wants a job. There are no more jobs. Oh, yeah, I see. I see. Hey, Bill, man. I can't get a house unless it's someplace like the West End. And I can't get a VA home for someplace like that. They say they can't help me with a job a job or training either. What the fuck is going on, dude? That makes no sense. Let me go talk to the guy I saw. 
I know how to talk to these people. You're my friend. I won't let them treat you like this. I'll fix this. Okay. I think you can. You're a good friend, Bill. Welcome again. We have approved your application. Hey, are there any more houses available um, east, of, east of Midtown where you showed me? Of course. Well, that's... That's funny okay. because my buddy came here <laughs> and somebody told him there were no houses to be had there. Uh, well, uh, what does your friend look like? What's he look like? He's... Is he a colored gentleman? Look, pal! He's a good man and served his country in wartime, and I still owe him 20 bucks. I'm sure he was a good man, but the way the real estate market works, the wrong kinds of people move into a neighborhood, the property values will decline significantly. This stinks! This is your first time buying a home. When people buy homes, it's an investment. No one wants to lose value on such a vital investment. This is wrong! I don't like it any more than you do. I really don't know anyone who'll say they want things to be like then why does the property value drop just because somebody who isn't white moves into the neighborhood? It's just naturally the way it is. The unseen hand of the marketplace. But who has decided the value of property has to do with the color of people's skin? No one really. That's a silly question. As she told you, the unseen hand. No, it's a <clears throat> No. It's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. It's a question you must ask. Who is responsible for what is happening? Why are so many people letting this happen? We talk about a free marketplace, but there seems to be no freedom here. There's something very wrong here, and everyone is, is helpless to change it. And what about these government housing programs that simply reinforce and even re even impose segregation on neighborhoods? Was that the government for the people, by the people? Okay.